This really was a great year of anime. There were so many shows that would stand out for years to come. You have cool action shows to get the heart racing, thrillers that keep you on the edge of your seat, not to mention great shows about time travel and time loops, which are utilized to tell one-of-a-kind stories. Plus, there's shows about fighting for survival in a cruel world, great adventures, and of course, giant robots. But it's not like this year is all about anime where the fate of the world was always on the line, though. We got absurd comedies, including the best reverse harem of all time, plus shows that take a deep look at the stereotypes we've gotten used to, and not to mention all those shows out there that are just fun to watch. And then there's Gintama, which is somehow has everything I've talked about before all wrapped up into a single show. Yes, 2006 really was a great year for anime. <laughs> what, did you think the title of this video was just a typo? Sure, it's the end of the year and everyone is making things like the top anime 2016, but that would just be too normal for me to do. It's much more fun to do something different and highlight some of the older anime that might have slipped under your radar. I just hope I told the person editing that first part what year I was talking about. Oh well, I'm sure she'll figure it out. Sure she'll figure it out. Sure! After strenuous editing and suffering until like 3 in the morning, sure, maybe she'll figure it out. But no! You couldn't have bothered to tell me that before I decided to date everything with 2016, because it's anime of the year, yada yada yada. No, no, you decided that it needed to be 2006. So instead, you put a whole lot of strain on me, and oh. Now I look like the bad guy, don't I? Yeah, I probably do. But I'm tired, okay? Let me just tell you, good sir. I just deserve a break, right? I gotta get it done by tomorrow, and I don't, I probably have to render it too, and I don't want to do all of this. But what are you doing right now? Instead of playing Fire Emblem, I'm editing your video! Anyways, enjoy. Anyway, I haven't seen everything from this year, but I've tried to make sure I hit the big shows and anything that looked interesting to me. But if your favorite is not on the list, then please let me know in the comments and I will at least consider checking it out. This list might seem a bit strange because I'm going to talk about all the shows I completed from this year, including some I don't like all that much, which might seem odd for a top list, but I still want to talk about them and I don't want to dedicate a full video for them, so I'll talk about it for like a minute here. I'm also excluding anime that had less than a third of their runtime in 2006 because they'd be more fitting to talk about in a different year or their long-running shows that placing them in a single year wouldn't really make sense. I also didn't go out of my way to watch anything with more than 26 episodes because I wouldn't have had time to watch all the shows I wanted to for this list. So with all that out of the way, let's get on to the list. Starting off the list with the worst of the year that I finished, we had J.O. Say, a show that no one talks about now and, well, with good reason. It did have a lot of potential telling an interesting story, and while it never stood out to me as a great show, it did have some good moments throughout the earlier episodes. The story takes place in a futuristic universe, and these two brothers are kidnapped and taken to a harsh world for prisoners, and they must fight for survival while learning the truth about their family and the purpose of them being sent here. The strength of the show were them trying to survive and learning about the world, but the second arc of the show failed to be that gripping with the main character Thor becoming an overpowered protagonist by that point, and it did not feel like the science fiction plot points were handled well enough for me to care about what was going on, and then there was also the addition of unneeded romantic drama, plot points just being left unexplained, including two characters that we don't even know what happened to them, so yeah. I won't say this is a completely bad show, but far more bad than good, so it goes at the bottom of this list. And next we have a movie, Brave Story. This is a kid's movie, so I guess I shouldn't be as harsh on it as I would other shows, but there are still movies made for kids that I can enjoy, well, this one I didn't like. The story followed a young man as he ventured into a fantasy land to have a wish granted that would have allowed his sick mom to be healed. The whole magical journey thing is one that's been done before and also done a lot better as I found much of this show just dull and boring. I didn't feel like the show properly fleshed out its world or explained how it worked. I did like some of the twists at the end along with the message the movie conveyed, but again, not much here of note. Next on our list we have Red Garden and there is so much I could get into here like I mentioned during my 12 days video, but the basic story is that these high school girls in New York City end up getting involved with some supernatural events where they are forced to fight for their survival. Not too unusual for anime, but where the show tries to be different is how it combines the whole supernatural mystery part of the show with a high school drama, which was an interesting blend at times. However, the ordinary parts of the story felt dull after a while, and the supernatural side also started to fall apart near the end. And then the OVA sequel is just something beyond words. It did answer a few of my questions about what happened to these girls, but it did so in a very odd way that left me with even more questions than I began with, so yeah. Not a show I recommend unless you just want something different and don't care about how well it's done. 
And then we have what is possibly the biggest disappointment to me this year, Ergo Proxy. This is a show that I have been wanting to watch for a long time, hearing all these good things about it, and at the start it was quite good with a dystopia society, some interesting mysteries about what was really going on in the world, along with a healthy dose of social commentary. But as the story went on, it ended up getting more convoluted, and then lost sight of the ongoing story that made the show interesting, instead deciding to focus on these episodic plots that often felt boring and pointless. The show was very much centered around its theme exploration, which, while interesting, does not work if the story itself isn't able to keep my interest. So with these many dull episodes in the middle, with little to no plot progression, I just lost interest. And then the candy just got completely convoluted, and yeah. Again, the show does have some high points, but even with them, it's not one I cared for. And here's the point where we start getting into shows that I enjoyed, the lowest ranking one from this year being Coyote Ragtime Show. This is a space western telling the story of a gang of thieves, the law enforcement trying to bring them to justice, along with a little bit of geopolitical drama to keep things interesting. This is very much a cool action show where you're not meant to think about the plot all that much, you just have cool characters doing cool things, and this can be enjoyable, especially with the amount of action and suspense the show throws in. I also quite enjoy the themes about friendship and family, though as a whole, the show doesn't offer anything that great. The characters are fun to watch, but they are not that deep, and the story is also pretty basic, and I can't say that much good about the action either. When I reviewed Cowboy Bebop about a year and a half ago, I said I wanted to see more shows refine the genre that Bebop had established, and while Carity Ragtime Show does fix some of the issues I had with Bebop, it doesn't have the same charm or interesting characters to explore. As a whole, the show is okay, enjoyable to watch, but not one I'd go out of my way to recommend. While I do like a wide variety of anime, the action shonen genre is probably my favorite, and this show ranking is a good example of this type of show for 2006. The story follows Kazuki as he gets wrapped up in the world of alchemy, and he wants to save innocents from the evil homunculus that want to eat people. This is overall a fairly standard action shonen, not doing much to set itself apart from the others of the genre, but still being enjoyable for those who like this type of show, and I always enjoy seeing heroes with incredible willpower who want to save everyone. One of the things I liked most about the show was its comedy as it does relish in the ridiculousness of the genre. I also liked the way the show set up many of the conflicts and seeing the different characters' ideals made the battles have that much more substance. The biggest issue I had with the show was all the focus given to Kazuki. Now, I like his character and he works great as a main character in a show like this, but most of the time it felt like all the other characters were pretty much useless. One of the ones Kazuki was able to overpower an enemy who seemed to be invincible simply through his force of will, and then there's an action he took near the end which just made no sense and threw all believability that the story had away. If you're a fan of the genre, you'll probably enjoy this one, and it does feel like a lot of the long-running shows, especially Bleach, despite this being only 26 episodes, but really, it isn't anything remarkable, especially if you're not a fan of the genre. 2006 is a year filled with a lot of big shows, and among the biggest is the next one on my list, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. It is one of the best shows I've seen combine the supernatural with a fun slice of life comedy, and this show inspired many others throughout the years. I really do like how the series was able to blend the two genres together, giving us some good lighthearted moments while also splicing in some really exciting parts as well. I did generally like season 1, unfortunately season 2 had some major issues with having two arcs I didn't care for at all, but then the series managed to redeem itself with the movie being one of the best movies I've ever seen. So, my thoughts on the series do vary immensely depending on the part, though as a whole I would say I like the series and it's one I recommend, even if you should skip like 6 of the episodes in season 2. The Grand Adventures are what drew me to anime before I even knew what anime was, with Digimon being the first true example of this. Sure, Pokemon was cool, and I did like Hard to Capture Sakura, but as a kid, Digimon was by far my favorite anime. In its fifth season, Digimon Savers lives up to the standards that the others have set. While it's been a while since I saw this show, I did love the conflicts that kept growing, and the darker tones the series had to offer made it feel like this show was growing up with me. One of the things that really stood out to me was the character of Ikuto and how he grew throughout the series. Sadly, I haven't found any of the other Digimon series since then to be all that interesting, but I guess I can't complain too much with five seasons I did like throughout the years. And maybe when I finally watch all of Try, I'll enjoy that too. We'll just have to see. And now going from shows that everyone has heard of to one that no one talks about, we have knowing. This is an action-adventure show with a science fiction setting. These school kids find themselves caught up in the middle of a war going on 20 years in the future. And the thing that really makes this show stand out to me is the way we see the characters as they are in these different timelines and see what makes them the people that they are. Like pretty much all shows about time travel, there are some parts that really don't make a lot of sense, but the suspense and action the show offered made it possible to look past this pretty easily. This really is a solid show and one of the hidden gems that I enjoy talking about pretty much whenever I can, like a certain other show I always bring up. There are a lot of great anime movies out there, or at least I'm assuming they are because I haven't seen all that many. But of the ones I have seen, Tekken Ken Kret is one of my favorites, and like many of the things I really love, it's hard for me to put it into words exactly why or how to explain what it's about. 
I guess the best way for me to put it might be that it's just a very energetic Gulag Pool type show focusing on these two orphan brothers who are missing a few screws. While I do love the characters and how they anchor each other, the art style really makes this a remarkable movie. It does get quite weird at times, bringing back some memories of Perfect Blue and you know how much I like that one. But I do always enjoy movies that can be a little bit strange and do something that nothing but anime can do. A lot of times I have in my mind what a show would be like before I go to watch it, but Higurashi was a case where I was quite wrong. I expected it to be a horror gore fest, and well, there is plenty of violence and blood throughout, but the quality of the mystery and suspense was also something I was not expecting. The show was built around having mysteries wrapped around mysteries, making it a thrill to watch as we slowly unraveled everything that was going on. There are a lot of different plots all happening at the same time, and the show was able to use its unique structure to slowly explore them all while slowly giving hints about what's really going on. I also love the show's focus on friendship, something I wasn't expecting for a show like this, but it's true what they say, friends will help you move, but true friends will help you move bodies. The biggest complaint I have about the show is how a lot of the arcs felt predictable because we knew where they would end up because of just the nature of the show. Though every arc did have something to keep me interested as we were trying to piece together the truth about the story here. And now we've reached the top five, and it was really hard to figure out the order from these. I went back and forth several times, because these are all fantastic shows, likely being in my top ten anime of all time, though I'll need to wait till I remake that list to tell you for sure. After a lot of deliberating, I decided to put Oron High School Host Club here at number five. Oron is a show about a school for the rich and Haruhi, an ordinary girl who is the only sane member of the cast. She ends up being forced to help out a host club where the most attractive guys entertain the girls of the school, and she ends up growing closer to these guys. This setup may sound like a reverse harem, which it is, but it's also a parody of reverse harems making fun of the common troops of the genre. This is one of the funniest shows I've seen with so many great moments throughout. More than that though, the show also takes a deep look at these characters showing what has made them the people they are and how the challenges they have faced have scarred them. The show is not content to just stop and make these characters stereotypical and that's what makes it so great. It also has some powerful emotional moments, especially as the show gets closer to the end. If you're a fan of comedy anime or just shows that challenge expectations, then this is the show that you need to check out. There are some shows that I have heard they are good for pretty much everyone I talk to, but I take forever to actually get around to watching, and Welcome to the NHK is definitely one of these. In fact, I probably wouldn't have watched it, at least not this soon, if I wasn't planning on making this list. But I'm really glad I gave this show a try. It's about a shut-in named Sato and his journey to grow out of being a Hikikomori. His journey is a slow and oftentimes regressing, and this is something I really liked about the show. Sato is messed up mentally with his fear and social anxiety, and while his problems are the most evident, all the characters have their own issues and brokenness, and that's what makes it a great show. What really stands out to me though is how relatable the show is because I see a lot of myself in Sato, more so than I'd like to admit. The best moments of the show were where Sato was terrified at who he could end up becoming if he kept going down his path, and the desperation of some of these characters had to just break out of the place they're in. There were a few things I didn't really care for about the show, like some plot convenience and a couple of things at the end, but as a whole, this show certainly lived up to the hype. I love cool action shows, so it was no surprise to me that I like Black Lagoon. What did surprise me was how much I liked it, though, making it easily my favorite of the genre. It did a wonderful job of showcasing the cast filled with memorable and likable characters and then letting them try killing each other because violence is always fun. What really stuck out to me though is how much I was able to grow attached to many of these characters. At first they kind of seemed to be just like cool characters because they're good with their guns or swords or whatever weapon they have, but as we see the characters more and learn more about them, their characters themselves really stuck with me. This wasn't just a show content with surface level entertainment, but it went deeper as it explored some of the dark parts of humanity. Add on the greatest English dub I've ever heard, and well, you've just got an incredible show. With all the great shows to come out in 2006, many of them are still remembered highly today. But then there are also the great shows that have been forgotten over the years, Zegapain being one of them. I like to describe Zegapain as a mix between Free and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Because the main character Kyo is a guy who loves swimming and he wants to restart the swim club, but he is then called to pilot a giant robot to save the world. It then goes off into some deep philosophical territory regarding what it means to be alive and it's fascinating seeing how all the characters come to their own answer and what they will do once they've found their answer. There's also a constant mystery about the truth of the world that Kyo and the other characters slowly unravel. The show also fully takes advantage of the slice of life moments because while they might not seem to matter much in the whole world in danger thing, the more normal plotlines really amplify the themes of the show and give Kyo's fight to protect everyone more meaning. With its incredible setting and thought-provoking themes, interesting characters, and exciting plot, it has become my favorite mech anime ever. I even consider putting this at number one on the list, but the show did seem to drag a bit in the beginning once the whole strange world thing wore off, and then there are some things near the end which didn't make a lot of sense. Still, even with these issues, it is still a fantastic show I highly recommend. While there are a lot of shows I really liked when I first watched them, many of them lost their luster after a while, as I found other anime that did the same thing, but better. 
Death Note is one of those that stands above all the other psychological thrillers I've seen. The mental battle between Light and Ella was nothing short of incredible, delivering on continuously rising tension as each one tried to be several steps ahead of the other. I also found Light to be a great protagonist and we saw him abandon his morality throughout the show but still have the charisma to draw those around him to him and even make the viewer want to see how he would get out of each situation. While I will admit the final arc does go downhill a bit, I still enjoyed it and found it to be a fitting end to the story. And because of the strong show all throughout, it makes Death Note my number one show of the year. So that concludes my list. And don't worry, I'm actually going to do 2016 videos soon. I just have anime to watch, and that will take a while because of what I want to do. So look forward to that. Tell me what you thought of my list, though. Have I highlighted any anime that you now want to check out? Are there others that you think I missed? And yeah, that would be great. Let me know in the comments, and I will see you all soon. But probably in like a week or two. Anyway, talk to you then.